Audi again, it's Tubal Kane, and I'm down in my basement workshop, my machine shop, and I'm going to give you that long-awaited shop tour that many of you have been asking about for several years now. And I don't want you to get your hopes up here now. We're just talking about a small basement workshop that's about 15 foot by 15 foot. And here, November 1st, 2015, we're going to take a little walk around the shop, and I've got uh, just about everything you can imagine down here except room. And I sure would like to have a lot more of that. But of course I've got machinery out in my cold garage. And you've seen that in some of my videos as well. But now that I've got a wide angle lens, I think that this will uh, aid me a little bit in showing you around the shop. So I want you to ignore the mess. But maybe you'll get some ideas on how I can improve my shop. Or ideas on how you can improve or set up your shop. And notice the different machinery that I have. And I have uh, way too many lathes, as you well know. But... I guess you can't get enough lathes and you can't get enough hand tools. Now I'm not going to go through all of the uh, machinist toolboxes. That has been done some time ago in uh, other videos and that was uh, pretty enjoyable for some of you. It was uh, called Tubal Kane's uh, Machinist Toolbox Tour. So take a look at those videos if you're interested in that. But uh, alright, let's uh, point the camera another direction and take a look at what I've got to show you here. This is one of my storage areas, and it's over near the furnace in a dark little uh, dank alcove, but I've uh, got plenty of light in there right now. And you can see just on these shelves that I've got some of my old planes and other things I don't use very often. Nice selection of tin cans. Hard to find. And over on this shelf, pretty much uh, some old electrical stuff and plumbing fittings of all kinds as well as what I got out in the garage so it's pretty handy to have all of these uh, plumbing fittings for no matter what I might do I've got the right size fittings and uh, over here are all kinds of threaded rod dowels and other uh, uh, welding rods and things like that in a, in a rack right here right here in the center of the room I have a cluster of machinery let's take a look at that first and then we'll go around the periphery of the room but this is my Boyce crane 14 inch metal cutting bandsaw and that's left from the Second World War but it still serves me pretty well. I would like to have a do-all saw but this is just going to have to do. And here is the ubiquitous 6 inch Delta Rockwell sander and I tell you I get a lot of use out of that. I think the bearings are pretty worn but it's, uh, it's still a machine I go to all the time and it, uh, it is very accurate as far as squaring things up. Now let's walk around the corner here and take a look. You've all seen this uh, clausing lathe a hundred times in my my videos, but it's a it's a 12 inch clausing 5900 series. It has the variable speed control, which is handy as heck, but very noisy. And we got. Uh, a rack here with all of my different centers and, and collets, although I do not have a collet attachment for this lathe, so actually those collets are for the other lathes. But down here I've got uh, different tooling, a loris, and i got a drawer full of that too. Can't get enough of that good tooling. And there's my Bernard three jaw chuck. And below that, some storage, just a work in progress. Probably some junk I should throw out. Here's my little hardened speed lathe, sometimes called a second operation lathe without a tailstock. And that's a handy machine, but I find that I haven't been using it much lately. But it's always there if I need it, and it does have collets, and it runs exceptionally true. And below that on a homemade stand I have my rotary tables and uh, extra chucks and things like that. Now let me start going around the edge of the room here. And Here's a large uh, storage cabinet that I have with, uh, with 100 drawers and these are different uh, storage units that I bought over the years and they happen to stack pretty well although I'm having a weight problem there where some of the drawers won't open because there's just too much weight on top of them but I've got 
nuts and bolts and screws and fasteners and uh, and uh, things I don't I do not even know what are in there but uh, I do find that very handy to organize my uh, my fasteners but I have so many fasteners there in other parts of the shop and outside as well so sometimes it's actually easier to go to the hardware store than to look through there but this area here I plan on rearranging it but I've got a rack that used to have a television up there years ago but I I, I think a TV doesn't belong in my my basement so I took it out and uh, up there are some of my dial indicators and uh, other things torches and it's just a mismatch it needs to be reorganized and right below that a couple of, of my machinist chests and then uh, down in this cabinet again that's a catch-all I don't know what it's all in there but I've got some castings and and batteries and different things like that and on top here is work in progress and there's always a lot of that and it seems like it's disorganized and uh, I guess it is disorganized Here's another big machinist chest, and I only moved this into position last year, but it, it's a handy place to keep some of my overrun of tools. And I got just so many, way too many. I'll have to sell some more on eBay this year, I think. That goes from floor all the way up, and a few things I'm working on there that I'd like to institute into my uh, What Makes It Work videos. And above that, my uh, taps dies and the little plastic drawers and I've got oh more taps and dies and wrenches and, and things right there and you've seen all of those individually brought over onto the bench and on this large shelf here again all kinds of aerosols on the top and tap wrenches transfer punches and a lot more fasteners and on the floor right here a bit of a wasted space where I've got uh, stock, rod, sheets, and things like that. And then over to the workbench here with the maple top, this is my actual working area where I spend most of my time with another machinist toolbox on a riser. And you've seen the contents of that, although I think that's <clears throat> changes from time to time when I get new things or rearrange. And my little camera on drill press more storage in the drawers, lots of tools in the drawers. Micrometers. My horde of pliers. I think you've seen all this stuff before. Cannon fuse. Don't tell the Homeland Security about that. And vice grips galore. Some of my real small tools that I use on a continual basis are right here in some drawers under the bench. Little screwdrivers, knives, deburring tools, measuring tools, little granite surface plate, a little bit small but serves me well. And then over here, the other four drawers. All of my little grinding supplies for Dremels. Files. More Dremels. Secret drawer. That's where I keep all my money. And uh, what do we got down here? Chisels and punches and pop rivet guns. And then a lot of stock that I use in my... Uh, a small engine building tube and, and small rod and so on right there and pliers screwdrivers a few wrenches and tons of punches and I just rearranged this area up here yesterday so now I finally know what's up there again but I got number drills and letter drills and torches and more measuring tools and Loctite and uh, on the bench also my 2x48 Kalamazoo bell sander which I use daily. I could not get along without it. I love it. And a 4 inch Colombian vise. These are tools that I use all the time for layout. 
refrigerator tray is handy for that. This is my tool board. All kinds of hammers, wrenches, snips, squares, uh, levels, and uh, what do we got here? Tubing cutters, knives. I just recently got this Fordham uh, flexible shaft grinder which I just keep hanging there always ready to use with a little uh, cutoff wheel so that that's been a good addition to the shop and those are pretty expensive but I got that I think for forty dollars and it works perfectly and here we got all kinds of uh, uh, pliers and wire strippers and uh, nut drivers more screwdrivers uh, and right here more pliers and uh, channel lock vice grips retaining ring pliers Hacksaws. I usually have uh, four or five or six different hacksaw frames, each with a different uh, blade, different pitch blade. Adjustable wrenches and a file rack that is most inconvenient to get at. And in the corner, some of my bar stock, rod stock, also rather inconvenient, and some C clamps down there. And then uh, right here, my favorite drill press is still my Walker Turner. Just a small drill press known as a sensitive drill press. And uh, this is the uh, Duro drill press that I put the VFD on in one of my videos. And back here in a most inconvenient spot is uh, soldering supplies and oils and more cutting tools and countersinks and chassis punches, abrasives, grease and whatnot. And on the base of the drill presses, some uh, uh, small vices. Did I mention these C-clamps back here? I don't know if I did. C-clamps back there. And uh, here's my little drill press uh, table that I intend to restore here. Maybe I'll do that in a video. And a tilting vise. This is the 12 inch Craftsman Atlas lathe, uh, 1976 model, so it's, well, it's already 40 years old or more, but uh, you've seen this in many videos and I have a lot of attachments for it. <clears throat> and I have another Atlas lathe as well. But uh, some of you guys with the Monarch lathes and the Colchesters make fun of these little, uh, what you, you would call hobby craft lathes, but they, <clears throat> there probably are more of these lathes in use than any other single model because they were affordable and they're popular because they can be moved into a basement. You can take, the, take them apart and two guys can get them down the steps where you can't do that with a Colchester. And down below we've got dial indicators of all kinds. measuring tools, spare parts, and down in here we got carbide tooling, inserts, high-speed steel tooling, old mandrels, drill bushings, boring bars, same thing down here, tool posts, tons of boring bars, sleeves, dedicated crescent and wrenches, All kinds of lathe dogs and uh, die holders, tap holders, and so on that can be used on the lathe. Extra centers and chucks and a dial indicator, yet more Loctite. And I got a magnet here with with uh, some of the more common high-speed steel tools that I use. Pretty handy for that. And on this rack, many, many more. Uh, quick change tool holders that can be used. Uh, they're the A size that can be used on the smaller lathes. And extra tool posts and chucks and so on back there and drill bits and just about everything that I would need when I run the Atlas lathe. Below the Atlas, and I built this steel base here years ago to fit these different storage bins, but I've got threaded rod and Delrin plastics and all kinds of chucks and uh, other lathe attachments there and down at the bottom in these uh, racks yet more steel and aluminum and right next to it 
is uh, the Rockwell drill press, which surprisingly I do not use very much. I think mainly because it's not as close to the bench. And it's incredibly noisy. And another nice big palm vise down there. And here's my little uh, air compressor that I've had for 40 years. And uh, it suits me fine down here. It, it isn't very powerful and I only turn it on because, you know, these things always leak. So I, I only turn it on when I'm going to use it. And that's not every day. It's pretty dark back here, but I've got all of my hand power tools and here's a whole set of uh, Whitney Jensen punches and I've got my uh, gauges here and all kinds of socket sets. Um, Oh, I don't know what all is back here, but there's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Saws all. And on this dark rack here, again, my brooch set, pattern making wood, more precision tools and electric tools, and more hammers down there. And my little 4-inch Rockwell uh, jointer, which I do not use very often, but I pull it out when I need to, but it's kind of out of the way so I don't trip over it as for as often as I use it and, and my Beverly shear which I love but it needs to be bench mounted and I did mount it on the bench and found that I did not use it and it just took up bench space but it is a nice little machine I'm right next to the bridge port now and I've got this shelf here and I've got this the shelving space just right plenty of shelves and got my Forestner bits up on top here and uh, all kinds of hole saws and uh, and drills, drill bits here. I think I've shown this in another one. I got reamers and step drills and letter drills and tiny bits and long bits and number bits and hones and uh, step shank bits and more bits than I can ever use and a complete set of brand new ones as well. And here's some little tap and die sets. And, more uh, reduced shank bits, reamers, and here we got chuck keys and chuck arbors and centers and these are all taper shank uh, bits, taper shank bits here, taper shank bits and taper shank reamers, uh, chucking reamers too, B blocks, vices, angle plates, drill gauge, uh, drill jigs, a lot of good stuff down there, a lot of good stuff. Here's my bridge port. You've seen that in plenty of videos, so I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it, uh, it's a nice machine. It's still tight. It came from a school up in Joliet, Illinois. Got a Accurite here, an older model, but it still works fine. It doesn't do any <coughs> fancy stuff with a memory or anything like that. This has the short table. I wish I had one with a longer table than this. And then, I don't know if you've seen it in one of my videos, I have a a break here that I made to stop the spindle, <clears throat> to hold the spindle when I change tooling. And then right next to it here, uh, another Kennedy chest. You've seen this, I believe, and the riser. I'm not sure that you've seen the uh, the craftsman box here that I've got it all setting on, but in that, more end mills than I could ever use more yet in the larger sizes and arbors jacks and gauges and gears more collets and other miscellaneous items in the bottom drawer I'm in the other room now. I wasn't really going to show you this, but this is my little Logan lathe, and that's been in, in a lot of videos as well. And one of my two Rockwell 14-inch uh, bandsaws. One with a quarter-inch blade, one with a three-eighths blade. It's mighty handy to have two or more of those. And uh, this bench over here, that's where I do a lot of my videos. This and that and all of that type of thing. And I think you've been through this big blue shelf with me, or not shelf, a uh, drawer set. And over here, many, many more 
nuts and bolts. Some of that stuff came from a hardware store that went out of business and I bought huge quantities of it and I probably used 1% of it. Some of my models up here and tape and electrical supplies. A lot more fasteners way back there where it's dark. And then some of my tooling for the lathes there are stored because I've got no better place to put it. We're just about to the end now. And yet some more storage with different fasteners and hooks and, and uh, milling machine tooling, boring heads, indicators, more indicators, and T-bolts. A lot of stock down here, a lot of stock. My technical library, or at least part of it, and that was shown in a video too, different uh, aluminum stock. And below here, abrasives of all kinds for wood and metal. And clamping. I don't really like these imported clamps, but I got a couple sets of them in different sizes. And in that corner are my models. My little steam models that I've either built or the toy ones that I like. Quite a few of those. And gentlemen, that pretty much concludes this video. Well, let me swing the camera one more time and there you can see my uh, dividing head. And over on the other end of the shelves, which you can see from the other shop, are all various tools, mainly uh, tool post grinders and things like that is what you're seeing from here. And gentlemen, Again, that concludes this video. I hope you liked this little tour of my basement machine shop. And this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.